Hey guys, it's Jerry H. Welcome to the practice tea. <laughs> oh, more the practice inferno. Man, it's just so hot here today. But guys, I had to get this on video. Because today, today I just want to show you, when, when Bill Phillips is talking of, of MMI, when Bill is talking about uh, tinkering and getting getting the the CL protocol to suit you. Yeah, I'm all for that because my protocol is not going to be your protocol and Bill's is not going to be mine and, and, and whatever. But as long as we can, and I keep saying this guys, as long as we can adopt the basic premise of, uh, of channel lock and that is that we play the ball back in our stance. We have our shoulders closed when we hit the ball which essentially creates a channel for the club to travel into from into out and of course the whole idea of channel lock is to just always start the ball start the ball in the same direction start it in the same direction it may curve a little bit after it's gone but if you can be assured of the ball starting in the same direction man that's got to be good for your confidence well it certainly is for mine now the JH protocol and this will be a very scratchy swing today guys because I spent a lot of time in the gym today and I've had a few things that that have really made me angry a few issues you know personal things that come into your life and they shouldn't come into your life and I went into the gym and I really was angry and then I punished myself and I'm really sore so and, and for me that's always a release from me I just go there get it out of my system okay so the JH protocol is this I'll always set it up in this fashion here here. Now there are three major things for me in my protocol and what I've found I just think works good for me and I'll tell you the reasons I think they work good for me. Guys the first one is that I've got significant back cock almost to the point that my shoulders are in their top of the swing position. I mean I've only done this in the last couple of days but for me, what it does is, and if you think about this, it makes a lot of sense. If I get in this position here, and that's basically, you know, full, full, full shoulder turn, the top of, all I have to do, my shoulder turn is over. All I've got to do is just take my arms back. What I do, the, the shoulder swing is not complete. It's about 80% complete. But what gives it the 100% completeness is that I just pull that trail shoulder back. To initiate the golf swing I get it here I get right here and then I just pull this back there and also for me guys I really I really sort of commit myself with huge uh, diligence and commitment to to keep the five o'clock nose in place it's so easy to let it slip and when it does slip and I've been watching Mr. Rex in the last two days and he's been just, just the most perfect ball striking because he is absolutely uh, committing himself to having unbelievable five o'clock nose. He's actually feeling, and his protocol will be different to mine, and it is. He's actually feeling, guys, when he starts down, he's actually looking for the shaft. So much as he keeping his head back, he's actually looking for the shaft, and he says that for him, I can't do it. Oh, I really haven't tried to do it. But he said that the shaft bisects his line of vision. He gets here, and I'll get him when he comes back up, if I'm still uh, videoing. When he comes back up, I'll get him to explain that. But he said that he actually sees it by the shaft coming. He can even see the shaft coming in. Now, I can't do that. But I would anticipate. Uh, reality would suggest that if I did that, I really would have to have my head way back. I couldn't do anything else. So, so for the JH protocol, it's basically this. What I've built in now is a lot of back cock. Lots of back cock. And from that back cock, I just pull that shoulder back. And really, guys, it's, it's, it's what I call a mini backswing. Because I've only got another you know, 10 degrees to go on my shoulders to complete the backswing. And the only thing I have to do in the backswing is just pull my hands back. I don't have to think about a shoulder turn because I've basically completed it. It's, it's really done. Now what it will do, 
It doesn't for me because I know where I am and why I'm there. But if you just went there like this now and you turned your shoulders around here, it would blow your head off. Because you think, wow, I'm aiming over the camera. And you'll feel that. But I know I'm not going to be there when I hit the ball. All I'm doing is, is mimicking my top of the backswing position. And coming down, I'm going, to, I'm going to take a lot of that off by the time I get to the ball. Now, the other thing that really is important for me, but, but vitally important for me, is to make sure that in that, that downswing slot and travel to the golf ball, that I'm really pulling with that lead hand. Really have to get that lead hand pulling from me. Because what that does, guys, is that really just blocks out this lead shoulder. If I pull with that lead hand, it just blocks that shoulder out. If I get in here and, I, and I've got this not, not well, not dominating, but, but really uh, applying itself in a very significant fashion, if I haven't got that going on, I've got a propensity where, where this could happen. But when I've got that going, I mean, I've got shoulder block personified. So that's, that's basically my protocol. <clears throat> uh, and there'll be a few other things with it. And I'll end up with probably four or five points in my protocol. Uh, Bill Phillips of MMI was saying that he went on the course the day before um, yesterday. And he, he, he actually got into a, a state where he actually lost his... Um, his equilibrium of application of the protocol and, and he said he just felt out of balance now guys and, and I put a comment on on his channel about about that and guys that's all about the proprioception senses that we have now we have a kinesthetic sense but that's basically how the body moves and why it moves uh, proprioception is, is basically the process of giving us feedback to where we are in space <clears throat> and the way I get the feeling of that, the way, and the way, what that leads to for me, is, is, is the balance factor. If I, if I actually get here, and I take the club to the top of the swing, and I close my eyes, I can really bring that proprioception uh, senses, or the proprioceptors, really get them going. Because, because when I get here, and, and I've, you know, I've closed my eyes, I can feel what's going on. Why? Because none of this and this here is affecting my um, my concentration or my application of thinking. Once I get back here, because I've, I've closed my eyes here, I'm, I'm honestly, guys, you can just feel the pressure points and the balance points. Immediately, I do that. I feel I feel a, a, a real lodging of weight there in that heel there. I, I feel a lodging here, but I don't feel that when I'm looking when I've got my eyes open. So they're just, they're just things, guys, that you can do. But at the end of the day, the balance is just absolutely vital for having consistent, uh, or applying consistent ball striking. Or more to the point, you have to understand your balance factors. And as Bill, what happened to Bill was, he said he lost his balance factor. And there was something in his structure that created the loss. But he found that out. He went back and he isolated the fault. Now when he's got that feeling, if that feeling ever creeps in again, he'll know what is precipitating that, that feeling that he doesn't want, that he feels that he's out of balance and not in balance. Now he will know that. But, but you will always get the feeling, guys, of the balance factor if you close your eyes. If I close it here, wow. I mean, I just... The proprioceptors just come alive. Well, the feedback mechanisms of the proprioceptors really do come into play. So, so just get that, guys. Just get the feeling here. <clears throat> here, just take it back. Close your eyes. Say, where's my weight? Where is it? And that uh, little uh, suggestion by George Corrin, uh, <clears throat> where he said he gets any bounces. If you close your eyes in, in the protocol, take the club back to here and then feel your balance now whether you're bouncing your knee or you're bouncing your hands or you're bouncing the back of your, your neck and your spine or your shoulders doesn't matter but when, but that's a quite an extraordinary feeling guys <clears throat> if I take the club back to there 
and, and with my eyes closed, I can really feel myself settling into the balance. And that's what I want to do. Now, just for some guys, some guys say, you know, a baseball backswing starts back here and it starts back here uh, with no, um, no backswing. We're back here. But a baseball player, a batter, gets back here, guys, and he's in this position here and he's working like this because he doesn't know what plane the ball's coming in on. It might be a low one. It might be a mid one, might be a high one. And he has to be able to, to get in here. He doesn't have a fixed ball. We have a fixed ball and we, we need a fixed radius to make contact with that ball all the time. And that's the difference between a golf swing and a baseball swing. There's no fixed plane in the delivery of the ball. Uh, but here there's an absolute requirement to have a fixed radius to make contact with that ball effectively and efficiently. That's the difference between a baseball swing and a golf swing. There's no back, there's no back swing, there's nothing here, uh, because they don't have the time, because the ball is coming at them. That disc golf ball here is, is, is dead, it's not going anywhere. But that's a live ball coming in. And they're here and they're, and they're pumping and they're feeling, because you know they're trying to, to condition their brain for what plane that ball's coming in on. What line of attack, what line of plane. So it might be up here, might be down here. So, so they'll have a little bit of a pump there because they're trying to, 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 to set themselves up for whatever plane difference there will be. So that's just an explanation on, on why baseballers, uh, you can't use that analogy of theirs uh, or, or the physicality of that as an analogy for a golf swing. You can, you can use the pump that they have or the little bit of pogoing that they have to feel the balance. They're certainly feeling their balance and getting in position. So you can use it from that point of view. Okay, there's a few things in there, guys, and I hope some of those will help you. So, 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 so for me, I'm here. I've got real big commitment to... I'll tell you what, I have got, I've got very sweaty hands. It's so hot here, guys. It's like, you know, 4.30 in the afternoon, and it's still 35, 36 degrees. It's brutal. Yeah, no breeze. So, yeah, so I, I'm into a big, a big back cock. And what happens, watch what happens here. If I'm just here with no back cock, watch that leg. As soon as I go into a big back cock, watch this. Comes across here. So I get a, so I get a pre, a, a pre load in that lead hip and that lead knee. And a pre, pre pivot load, which is what I want. I mean, it's already done. I don't have to, 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 to wait for this to, to move into that position in the back swing because it's already there. Okay. So this is this is JH's protocol. I've got a lot of back cock. A lot of back cock and a big commitment to um, to uh, to five o'clock nose. Guys, there it is. First hit of the day. I feel like my body belongs to somebody else because of the workout that I've had in the gym. I'm so sore in the in the chest and all the other stuff. I just feel like I'm. I should be on a gurney in the back of an ambulance. I really feel not not well. My body is just <laughs> really took a beating. But that was fantastic. That just went dead straight. So, guys, I've got a lot of a lot of a lot of back cock, and I just turned that that trail shoulder, that extra little bit. And, and they're two golf balls right on top of one another. That's the reality of that. So that's, that's basically how I'm going to structure my protocol. It's not, it might work for you. But if you look at the logic of what I'm doing, and it's logic for JH, if I get in here and I pre-turn this the shoulder girdle to here, and then I, all I have to do is just pull that trail shoulder back, the shoulder turns over. The addition of the lead side contributing to the pivot is over. I don't have any of those things to start moving and create any, any, any sort of physical consternation because they're already there. What they'll do from that position, that preset position, is very little. There will be very little. They will be here, and everything's here, but, but there's nothing much going on here. 
Look, th this is already pre-pivoted. And all I do then is pull that shoulder back, here. Club's looking at the ball, here. Now the other thing, guys, is the pulling, the pulling of the lead hand. You must pull that lead hand. Well, you don't have to, but I just find that the contact that I get, when I get, what does it feel like, Jades? How are you pulling that lead hand, that lead hand, lead arm? How are you pulling it? Well, when I get to here, guys, I'm pulling with this, this heel pad of the hand, these back fingers, and I'm pulling it that way. I'm pulling it pinky up. Now, because the club is, 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 has got a fair bit of velocity on it, it's not going to come through in a hold-off shot. It will start down in that fashion, but it will come through and it will release because of the, the swing speed and the inertia that's in the golf swing. It'll just do that. So, uh, I've really come back to, to adding the, the, the thought process of, of really pulling with the lead hand. And I'm not left-handed, I'm, I'm right-handed. So it's always tough for a right-handed person to put that emphasis on the lead hand. Guys, I'm just so sore. Okay, so I'm just going to back cover it. Just... And we need to give a big commitment to the five o'clock nose. Even with a wounded body, and you know, like the timing not as 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 good as it should be. I mean, they're eighty percent shot, but they're all just dead straight, and they're going to be on the green. Okay, come on, Chase. Pull that trail shoulder back. All right, now I'm loosened up after four shots. Come on. Big, big, big trail shoulder pullback. Get here guys, there's never any wrap over and no, and no drive over at all. I say drive over, there's no drive over of the club around there. All right, big back cock and just a 10 degree pull back of the trail shoulder. That's one of the best shots I've ever hit since I've been on Channel Lock. Okay, there's no pause or no ready code going on there, guys, because there can't be, because I'm too tight. My body's just, I'm just really too tight to, to have any, any ready code there. Come on, just, just pull that 10 degrees back. See, it pulls this in here, guys, looks really nice. And again, that's one of the other pluses of channel lock. You can come along with a, you know, with a wounded body and a lot of things going on and you think oh, in a normal golf swing you'd just be all over the place. But here all you're going to do is mistime it. And they're 80 percenters, but they're just dead, dead on the target. Although that other one was, was 100 percenter. Come pull it back, James. That's 110 percent, so that's made up for the other ones. So if you think about the logic, guys, of what I'm doing with that, with that, what I call a pre, a pre shoulder turn and a, uh, and a pre, pre lead side uh, pivot uh, inclusion as well. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. So as soon as I go here, I'm not doing that with my head. I'm just doing that. They all just land in the same place. 
Every one of them. And that's the good thing about them. Come on, change. Pull it back. Fantastic, I love it. Just trying to hit a few shots guys to loosen up and give Mr. X time to get back here. Okay. Big five o'clock nose shade. Big big right trail shoulder pullback. That's perfect. Just perfect. And that's a wounded body guys. And a restricted range of motion. So, absolutely uh, support what uh, uh, Bill Tinkerbell uh, Phillips has said. Yeah, tinker as much as you like. Get it to work for you, but you must include the basic uh, premise of uh, a channel lock. Otherwise, we just won't be doing channel lock. All right, come on. Get that back here. This is just 100% my my protocol. It's great. I can tell you in the old days, guys, if I'd uh, playing the old conventional swing, if I'd have had any issues in the gym or got beat up in you know in a martial arts bar or something like that. Uh, I come out with a conventional golf swing and the golf course wouldn't be in play. But with this we just know. The worst of any of those shots there has been just a probably 10 yard push and a couple of uh, fifth groovers. But the rest of it, I mean they'd just, they'd all be essentially on the green. Come on Chase, pull it back. It's just the same shape every time. And I guess that's the beauty of a golf swing, of a, of a really, a really reliable process when you can be out of sorts, but you don't hit awful shots. Come on. All right, I'll try and, I'll try and just put a little bit of ready code in there, or pause code. Well, no pause there, but that, that was good tempo. <clears throat> They're all in the same place. Come on, nice little bit of pause. That's just a bullet, guys. That's a bullet. Wouldn't you like to be able to make 20 swings? And every one of them indifferent, uh, but still get the ball towards the target. And if, if I was hitting towards the green, you know, if those 20 shots, you know, probably 15 would be on the green, and the other ones would just be short, or those couple would just be a little bit right. Uh, but they're not going to be over here in the pond or or in trouble. That's in the hole. There was a hole there. And I haven't got, you know, the absolute total commitment to uh, to the five o'clock now. So okay, I'll gather here. Okay, I'm gonna hit this shot, the golf course orientation, just taking the club out of the bag. I'm thinking protocol, protocol, protocol. What is the protocol, JH? What is the format? Do you know what it is? Okay, I'm already going through it. I know it, I see it, I feel it, I taste it. This is it. I see it, I feel it, I taste it. Well, there was a flag there that would have uh, paint stripped it. But guys, that's, that's no surprise to me. That goes where I want it to go. It goes where I want it to go because I've applied the protocol. Take the club out of the bag, got a different target. Turn around a 50 degrees. 
But this is all the same, guys. See, this never changes. Pre-shot routine is always the same. Go in the hole. Guys, channel lock works. That's the that's the line, just channel lock works. If you apply channel lock, channel lock works. Guys, guys, really? Now watch this ball, you can't see the ball. That's that's like a yard away from the other golf ball. Now I'm no machine, and I'm certainly no Jordan Spieth or Lou Trevino, but but there, you, you can hit the ball very accurately. I mean, you wouldn't do that on the golf course. You're not going to hit shots inside a meter circle or anything. But but when you're lined up here, and when you get the feeling, I mean, that's what happened. Those two balls are just there because they were the same shot. Now I'll I'll turn around this angle one, but I'll go out towards the old car. So I'm, I've come around, you know, 80 degrees. Go in the window. Go in the window with the car. Well, it won't go in the window because I can't reach the car. But it was right on line for the window. It's into the wind out there and I haven't got enough club to get there. And that's how you should practice, guys, as a side. Now, don't, don't just hit balls. If you're really going to be a practicer, you should have your balls over there and go and pick them up. I, don't, I have them here for expediency in the front of the camera. But a real practicer will have them over there, walk over, pick up the golf ball. You might bring two back, but don't bring any more. And run the flags or the, or the targets. Run the targets. That's what I do with guys when, when I'm trying to give them golf course orientation. I make them run the flags. Now, there's two flags here on the putting green, about about seven yards apart. I'll just rip this straight through the middle of them as, as a starting direction. Now guys, if they were seven yards apart, that was 3.5 yards either side of it. Okay, that swing is brisk and sharp today because I'm brisk and sharp. I'm really, really, uh, Really sore. I actually pushed so much over my normal weight today that I, you know, I had sore spots before my eyes. I was actually extending myself, which is silly at my age, but I was just so, I won't go into it, but suffice to say, I was an angry lad or whippersnapper when I went in there, and I did a lot of whipping and snapping, I can tell you. Life, life doesn't throw a straight ball at you every day, guys. And it's not supposed to. What is it, Malcolm Fraser, our former Prime Minister, his famous line, life was not meant to be easy. And it's not. But, uh, but I've had, <laughs> I won't bore you with the details, but I've had a, a couple of horrible years and, and I thought they were sort of starting to dissipate, but they seem to be hanging around. And guys, what I do, the, the great thing for me is I can come out here, and although I've gone on with that diatribe there, I can come out here, and this is a refuge for me. I can come out here, no matter what the woes of the day are or the week are, when I'm out here, it's escape. And I can't really think about anything else. The only reason I'm talking now is I'm, I'm actually sore. Okay? Go for the left flag, Jazz. Try and, if the flag was 100 feet high, just take the flag out of play. Okay, see, guys, look how much back cock here. Guys, that would have taken the flag off. If it was a 100 foot high flag, would have just taken it off. Okay, so, so the whole idea of that video was to, to show you what I'm doing in my protocol and we'll just revise it. I've got a lot of back cock. I almost feel like I'm fully cocked. Probably got 10 degrees to go, which gives me the ignition move of pulling that trail shoulder back with our motor mower our process here. Really committed to five o'clock nose. I want to put the nose on the ground and trying to get a lot of lead hand um, action on the ball but I'm not doing that uh, 
because my, my lead shoulder is quite sore. So when I pull it actually hurts. But I'll try and put a little bit on, just one more. It's a lot of back cock there. Well, guys, hear the sound difference there? Just the, the sound difference is amazing. That guy we had here over the weekend, the uh, ex-Australian uh, uh, international uh, wallaby player, rugby union player, test player, I mean, powerful guy. And when he came here the first day, I mean, he dug divots over there and it looked like we'd had a trenching machine in here to put some pipes down. I mean, they were, if you fell in them, you'd be a rescue party to get you out. But what we did in just basically, you know, one session, we took him from divots that were so deep, so across, to a third of the depth and into out. So guys, that's what Channel Lock does. It really does give you the, um, the shallowness. Okay, try and hit the right flag, Jays. Come on. Lots of back hook. Look at that lead knee. I love it. Oh, gee, that's a good shot. Such a good shot. Now, okay, there's a lot of... That's a quick swing today because I'm tight. Okay, guys, the whole idea of it was... Uh, I can, as I said, I concur with, uh, with Bill Phillips. You know, absolutely. You know, tinker, do what you want. But think about the logic of this. If you're here, you have to go. You, it's all done. Back swing's done. Got to put the arms here. Just put them there. And that's all I feel I'm doing. I'm just... That extra 10 degrees is pulling it back and just putting the club there. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. All this is done. It works, guys. I mean, I never hit any of those shots other than where they were supposed to go. And that's with an injured body and uh, very little uh, uh, flexibility in play. But they all went exactly where I wanted them to go. With just a variation in timing. But those last shots, they're all perfect. They're just 100 percenters. Okay, guys, that was just something I thought I'd give you. Uh, the protocol. And think of the logic of that. Just think about it. And there's a couple of other things. And Mr. X comes back. He's down there with the oh, the rugby union players down there. He's down there talking to him. I want to see this guy hit it, guys. He's just uh, there's a, a gate over here where I hit five irons too, and I can hit five irons out the gate over here. For me, he was hitting eight irons out the gate. He's a strong dude. Strong dude. Okay, guys, that's uh, that's today's video. All right. Um, yeah, give me some feedback on that, because, guys, I like this logic. Not much to do after you're here. It'll feel funny, but just remember, this is your backswing, this is not your impact, so don't say, oh, I'm, way, I'm aimed over there. No, you're not, because you're in your backswing. That's not your impact position, that's your backswing. Okay, guys, have a look at that and give me some feedback on it. I think Mr. Mr. X has gone walkabout, as we say here in Australia. Australia. Those shots were good, weren't they? Whoa, were they ever? <laughs>